what's 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 your story? <laughs> what was a story that I you were going to tell? Stories. Um, some are like emotional and like good <laughs> and happy, and then some are like this is an unfortunate thing that happened to me. <laughs> so uh, I, I can go with either. Um, let's start with emotional and then go to happy. Okay. <laughs> Um, a story that comes up talking about emotional happy was when I came out to my mother. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that was a really, really big deal, and I I'll remember every single detail mm. of it. You know, <laughs> um, do you just want me to start? Yeah, sure. I, <laughs> okay. I love hearing these. <laughs> um, so I had for a really long time, you know the stories that you hear where you're like people know from from an early age mm -hmm. i did too but i just thought it was me being weird so mm -hmm. i didn't put thought into it mm -hmm. <laughs> and i don't know it it was very strange growing up that way because i had no idea what was going on mm -hmm. um i don't i still have no idea what's going on but <laughs> <laughs> but um it was just something that I was aware of, but at the same time, everyone around me, except for my friends in school, were, like, super not into that scene. Hmm. And uh, I don't know. It was, like, of course, that was during, like, middle school and high school, so hmm. you know how, how kids can be when, <laughs> when faced with something like that. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Although it's probably a lot worse in Oklahoma. Yeah, it it really is, you know, it gets, it gets pretty bad. Um, I, <laughs> one day in, in middle school, I, all of my friends and I, who I'm still friends with, every single mm. one of them, <laughs> were sitting at the lunch table <laughs> at Hefner. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, we, one of them was like, you know, I think I'm bi. And then we were all like, sure, why not? Mm. And we were all, that was like everyone. We, we yeah, just started yeah. going by that. And uh, I texted my mother <laughs> <laughs> during the middle of, like, computer class or something. And I just told her, and she was like, I think she thought that we had been, like, yelling about it at lunch. And she was like, <laughs> so she got, like, freaked out. And then I came home, and I was like, I was kidding. It was a joke. Never mind. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just avoided it. And then... It kind of stewed for two or three years. And one of the things that kept me from talking about it was that I, my family would sometimes make remarks, like just little remarks, and they mm. were harmless now that I look back on them. But when you're so paranoid right. about, like, everything that you do, mm -hmm. I was convinced that they would, like, kick me out of the house. Right. <laughs> and something horrible would happen, and mm -hmm. I'd be like like disowned mm -hmm. even though they are not the type of people in the world to ever do that <laughs> that was what i was convinced because right, of right. The things that they had said mm -hmm. and um so it all happened <laughs> actually it was five years ago five years ago next month mm. um, <laughs> so we went to my mother and i went to a lady gaga concert in in st louis at the Scott Trade Center. That's already a good start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In case she didn't already know. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, we got there and she did my makeup because I, would, I wanted, like, eyeshadow because it was supposed to be, like, a super dark and, like, fun, like, mm. show and everyone was going to be wearing, like, crazy stuff, which mm -hmm. they were, and it was the best concert I've ever been to. <laughs> but I, it, all, it also has sentimental ties. But anyway, so we saw her, and I've always loved her. She's my number one. We go to every concert. She came here and we went to go see her. A couple in December. Um, but, you know, at one point she stood up and she sang a song from the album. And she was like, and this one's for all my, my queer LGBTQ plus fans. I want you to stand up and, you know, whatever. And I started to cry because I knew I couldn't stand up. Mm. Because she didn't know, and I, I, I was like, I should, and then I was like, mm, no, not right, not right now, in front of like ten million <laughs> people, and so we were in our hotel room the next day. I think we were staying another day because we were gonna go by the. We literally our hotel was like right by the arch, mm. and so like you could see it from the window. It was right, like a right. yard away, 
And um, I, I spent the whole morning while she was getting ready, just like sitting and staring at the window down at the at, at the street. And I was like, "This I can't go on like this. This isn't working. And um, I was texting my friend who was like telling me what to do. And I was like, they, they were like, just talk to her. And I was like, I can't. <laughs> this will end badly. She will leave and I will stay here. And um, <laughs> eventually I just started crying and... She came out and she saw that something was wrong and she asked me what was wrong. My mother asked mm-hmm. me what was wrong and I didn't answer. And so she kind of came closer and I just looked at her and I said, do you love me? And she said, of course. And I mm-hmm. said, will you always love me? And she just sat down on the bed and said, tell me about it. Mm-hmm. And she knew mm-hmm. right away. Right. And, <laughs> and so we sat there and I cried like a maniac for like three hours <laughs> while we talked about it <laughs> and according to her she was the thing she was saying like while we were there some some guy came in an elevator and he was wearing like short shorts and a tank top and glitter mm-hmm. and he was like are you guys excited for Lady Gaga <laughs> and she was like I can't believe people let their children go out like that and I was like mm-hmm. um. <laughs> <laughs> but um, apparently she was saying those things according to her to kind of coax me into being like well what if I you know right? And, which I understand but it was it was a very bad tactic. Right. <laughs> Just because it puts you off yes, even more. Yes, exactly. It was, it was horrible. And so I was like, I appreciate your effort, but that was not the best way you could have yeah. about that, Mother. Yeah. Um, and then it just kind of went from there. You know, mm-hmm. my friends knew before my family knew because I was just I – w- I felt more confident telling my friends. Mm-hmm. But um, – and then it just kind of went from there. You know, I told my family and – of course, a, few, a couple of them were like, well, I mean, I, I wouldn't have wished for it, but I can't, like, stop loving you or whatever. Right. There hasn't been – I've been lucky enough to be in a situation where there haven't been many people that I'm very close to that have been like, I can't talk to you anymore, mm-hmm. you know, which does happen all the mm-hmm. time. It happens to so many people. I know yeah, people yeah. that have, it's happened to where right, right. they've come out and half their family has been like, you can't visit us. You can't see mm-hmm. us. We don't want to see you on holidays anymore. Right. And it's horrible. And it makes me so sad. And I'm lucky that that didn't happen to me. So I'm very privileged. And I try to help. Mm. Um, and so – and then it just kind of went from there and I started – kind of, you know, dressing and doing more stuff that I like. And that was around, that was 2013. So you were gone. Mm -hmm. And I dropped out of band that year. Mm. (laughs) And then I joined Guard in the winter. And we did, I did Winter Guard. And Mm -hmm. that was kind of a way of me, like, expressing myself was during Winter Guard. And that was amazing until it came to a very abrupt end. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's my other story. Okay. That's my party story that okay. I, t- I tell at parties. Because <laughs> it's one of those where I'm telling it and then I tell the end and people are like, what? Um, so, yeah, sure. I don't know about any of these things. What happens? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, I don't know if you got to meet her because I think Brittany was still there. Um, I was in guard. Do you remember who Kayla Hearn was? Mm, probably not. I also, like, by the time that my senior year rolled around, like, more and more people were becoming just, and especially even now, like, more and more people are becoming blurs to my memory. Well, she was a director. Uh. <laughs> okay. Well, she was the guard director that came in after Brittany. Uh, okay. And she was who I worked with. Mm. And, you know, since I had dropped out of band the previous um the previous semester they were like they like they were my friends asia you know mm. he who's my best friend now um all the guard kids are my best friends mm-hmm. now um he told me hey you should come to a winter guard auditions and i mm-hmm. was like i can't dance <laughs> and he was like no you should come and so i went and uh, I auditioned, and she said she really liked me and that she thought I had a lot of potential. And so uh, while I was auditioning, Dane and Rob Hullett came mm. up, and they were like, what are you doing here? And they were like, you can't mess us up again. Nah. It was like the two Muppets that, like, yeah. back, like <laughs> heckle each other. 
And I was like, I'm doing guard. I'm in a better place. <laughs> mm. This isn't going to happen again. I like what I'm doing this time. Mm. And so they were like, well, we need you to, like, tell us that you're going to be loyal to the program or whatever. And then I, like, got in trouble for being there. And uh, and then Kayla fought for me, which was, like, the nicest thing anyone's ever done for mm. me because she saw potential in me. And she said, I want this kid in my guard. Mm. He's good. Mm. And so... I I made it and we did a wonderful show had a wonderful season it was such a good show and it was so much fun to spin and then I came back for that summer Mm -hmm. and even when I came back for summer they were like you sure you're not gonna ditch us again and I was like I just did winter guard what the hell yeah I was like (laughs) did I not just prove that I'm okay (laughs) um and so I made it into guard for the summer that was when we did pale blue dot which was so much fun because <laughs> I got to be on the 50 for the big impact and <laughs> that was like my my time I think that they put my dot there on purpose because mm. then if I left it looked good enough because it was just a circle with something missing in the middle mm. All, most of my <laughs> dots were like that so I'm pretty sure they strategically dotted me mm. <laughs> but so summer starts and Kayla and I grew really close and like like while she's stro- like while we're stretching, I'll sit next to her and we'll make fun of the other kids. Mm. <laughs> like we're really, really good friends. And you know the the seniors that year who were Asia, Catherine, and Tori. Mm. And wait, no, sorry, that was Winter Guard. The seniors that year who were Olivia. Well, you probably don't even know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Asia, Catherine, and Tori were the seniors Winter Guard, mm. and so they loved her too. And we were all like kind of a gang, and like we would go to eat Chinese afterwards with mm-hmm. Kayla and and the, and some of the guard girls. And <laughs> she was so funny uh, when when we were away from like the kids who couldn't spin, and she would like make fun of them. <laughs> and it was <laughs> it was really fun, but it was slightly unprofessional. Mm. But I, we didn't mind, you know. Everyone <laughs> has a stress, but. So summer starts, and it's going really good. I'm loving it. I'm loving being in the guard while we march. I'm loving doing – I'm actually having fun at band camp instead mm-hmm. of, like, burning <laughs> in the sun with a with something in front of me <laughs> <laughs> pointed up I'm at, sorry, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> like, at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Pointed up at, like, you know, <laughs> 75. But uh, – and so – we, I have to remember the details correctly. We were doing so well. We had gone to some contests and I had performed. There was nothing like performing on the field with with the flags. And I got to use swing flags and I got to spin my rifle and I got to do all sorts of cool stuff and dance. And, and then all of a sudden, out of literally nowhere, she starts being super hostile towards the guard hmm. and like bitchy hmm. and... And so all she gets, she starts being like bitchy towards the guard, mm. and they're all like, "I'm going to quit. I'm going mm. to not be in guard anymore because mm. she's making me feel horrible about myself." And she right. was throwing out insults that were like personal, and like she shouldn't have been saying, yeah, yeah. even as a director and as like her really good friend, as a student. I was like, "This is not okay." Mm-hmm. And, like, she was just angry all the time. Mm-hmm. And so they were like, we want someone to talk to her, but we're all scared. And they were like, Tyler, why don't you talk to her? You know, you talk with her the most. And I was like, right. yeah, sure, okay. Because I was going to be a senior the next year, and I wanted to have credibility and be able to handle situations. And so I came up to her at lunch, and she goes, what? And I was mm-hmm. like, <laughs> I was like, so I just wanted to talk. Because some of the girls are starting to feel a little burnt out because I think they're taking some of the criticisms personally. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and she was, she said something that I don't remember. And I was like, well, <laughs> we basically talked about that, but the whole time she was super snippy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, I'm not coming for you at all. It's just, I want to know. I remember, I remember saying, I want to know what we can do to help solve this problem and make it better. Mm-hmm. And basically it ended with her just saying, well, it better get better. And then like shooing me away. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. And so <laughs> this is where it gets good. Um, 
I went and told them what she said, and I was like, well, I mean, I think I got the message through to her, but I don't really know. And then we practiced for a while, and then she just stopped showing up to practice. Hmm. No one could find her. Band directors couldn't get a hold of her. Hmm. No one. She's not answering her phone. She's right. not at her house. Hmm. No one knows where she is for, like, two weeks. And then... I can't remember if I left before she came back because I felt bad or how I left. She might have, like, come back and then I left a little bit after. Mm -hmm. But either way, she came back and once I was gone, she told the entire guard. (laughs) (laughs) She came back and said, they were like, where were you? And she was like, oh, Tyler Johnston sent me to the mental hospital. He told me that I was a bad teacher and I was burning kids out. And I was like, nice. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And so I don't think I should ever go back there because the next day, Dane came to me and he was like, if you have a problem with a teacher, you need to tell us. And I was like, okay, what are you talking about? Um, Turns out that's what he was talking about. Hmm. And uh, I never went back. Hmm. (laughs) It kind of ended my guard career. That's dumb. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's really dumb, but every time I, I pull the, the – we still joke about it. Like, mm-hmm. it's a joke now, but, like, it honestly really hurt for her to, like, turn on me like that. Right. It was – it was just – I didn't appreciate it. Right. But, and, I mean, obviously, she was going through some shit. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I yeah. know what it was. Obviously, but, she had some personal issues to deal with, but she uh, <laughs> eventually, like – Later that semester, she was like, guard just isn't for me anymore, and she quit. Hmm. And now I've talked to – I'm not sure if, you're, if you should clap this, but I've <laughs> talked to people who know people in the guard community, and they say that nobody wants to work with her anymore and that hmm. she's, like, gonzo. Hmm. <laughs> so I broke somebody. <laughs> well, I don't even think it was you that broke because – Oh, no. I know. I know it wasn't like my the, fault. The guard as a whole was like, hey, something needs to be done about this. Yeah. So, like, and so I took commission and then I got bitten in the ass for right. it. Right. So, so th- that's not your fault. No, but the directors see it that way because they only heard her side of the story. Right. Well, so if I ever were to go back, I'd be like, please listen. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I've told this story on the podcast before, but do you know the, the my end of the like drum major thing? So, I mean, that that's another instance where I think the the directors didn't consider all aspects of the story. And so, um, having done music ed for two years and now taking some education classes now for mm-hmm. my master's, um, I'm... Like, I've always had a passion for teaching in the first place. Um, And so I just think that what we were dealing with as far as directors and education or whatever, um, they did not have a passion for their students. Yeah. Um, And it – this is a um, – Keith White ism, uh, as he calls them, but like a, a Keith ism that you you only need two things to be able to teach. You need to know your stuff and have passion for your students. But really, you only need one thing, and that's just passion for your students. Mm-hmm. Because if you do have passion, you'll learn your stuff so that you can teach them. Yeah, and so. In in that regard, I just felt like we weren't dealing with people who were passionate about us succeeding. Exactly. <laughs> it just felt so unprofessional. And so, uh, and I mean, I don't, sure, let this be slander or whatever, but like, I don't, I'd like to talk about it because from what I've gotten and from other people that have gone through the, their program specifically as yeah. well is that either you're on a good side or you're not. And <laughs> yeah. I was never on a good side. I was I was a problem child throughout mm. 
throughout my career in band, and I'm pretty sure that Dane, like, wanted to murder me because I was so frustrating. Like, okay, so we went on the San Antonio trip, mm-hmm. at, which was, like, a blast. You yeah. know, I have vivid memories <laughs> of the day we got to SeaWorld. Actually, I have vivid memories of the trip because I remember waking up in the suburbs <laughs> and we were all like, where are we? <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if you were on that bus because we took two buses or three. I don't know. But our, our bus, like... Would you have remembered John and I going, woo, woo? Yes, Woo! yes. Yeah, I, so that, I, yeah. <laughs> actually, no, I was on a, uh, I think I was on, I don't know. I don't know if I was on that bus. <laughs> that, you did that at the park, though. Oh, yeah, we did as, that liter- just constantly. Oh, uh, so I have vivid <laughs> memories of everyone running to the back of the of the uh, park and getting on the Steel Eel roller coaster. <laughs> and you and... Uh, Coley. Yeah, you and Coley were on there. And so were all the other the seniors sat in the back, and I was with my fr- my friends in the front, and it was the like most ecstatic experience going on a <laughs> roller coaster with all these people that I knew. Mm-hmm. That was so fun. <laughs> I have such fond memories of that trip. But then <laughs> that night, I was rooming with some people that you know. They were in your section, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um. <laughs> I'll just name them because it's a funny story. Don't say last names, I guess. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not saying last names. <laughs> you might want to like cut what I've said before, but <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so <laughs> I was in there with Will and Derek and Tim. Mm. Those were my roommates, Fun. and so <laughs> and so. Tim goes, I need this bed. And Will goes, I need this bed. And Derek and I look at each other and we'll go, huh, we're sleeping on the floor. So Derek takes all of the pillows and the blankets (laughs) and I have the pillow that I brought Mm. and my backpack. So I slept on the floor on my back in the freezing cold on top of a pillow because I didn't have any pillows to cover up with. Mm. And uh, I was... Um, I was laying like underneath the air conditioning mm. <laughs> because there was no room because <laughs> right, right. we were on the floor and I wasn't, I didn't fall asleep until like seven in the morning mm. and we had to be up at like 10 because right. we had to play that day. Mm. That was the day that we were going in for like our concert, mm. whatever, which was fun because I love the music that we played. Um, and so that happened. I woke up and I felt horrible. Like, mm-hmm. I thought I was going to die. Mm-hmm. And so I, f- I was trying to get sleep anywhere I could. So I slept in the bus on the way there. And then all of a sudden we were there. Mm-hmm. And so we got there and I played fantastically, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then I was like, maybe I can go back to the hotel. And they were like, nope, we're going to Six Flags. <laughs> and I was like, oh, boy. And so I spent the entire time we were at Six Legs trying to find out a way to get back home <laughs> because I felt terrible and I could not do another day of sleeping on the floor like that. Mm. And uh, <laughs> so I was, like, talking to people and being like, hmm, like, how could I get from point A to B? And so we didn't figure anything out. And the one ride that I wanted to ride at Six Legs was close, so that was a bummer. I wanted to ride that little Superman ride. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was closed all day. So I just waited outside and nothing happened. <laughs> and um, so we get back to the hotel and I'm like dead. And I am like in the bathroom freaking out. And <laughs> my mom calls me and goes, well, one of the directors said you could sleep in their room. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm really, I'm okay. And, uh. I ended up being fine, and then, <laughs> but I think that director told some of, I think that director told Tim, because as soon as I walked in the door, he goes, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> and so then when we were going to bed, Will was like, yeah, uh, I'll call this bed again, and Tim can have that bed again. And Derek and I looked at each other and we were like, floor again? And then Tim was like, no, why don't we share beds? Because I think he knew that I was like, 
dying. And so I had to share a bed of with Will. And then <laughs> and then I was <laughs> and then I was across from us was Derek and Tim in bed and Tim would not shut up and it was so funny. <laughs> he, he, I mean Tim's great. Yeah, they were ridiculous. <laughs> he was just saying shit that <laughs> was off the wall and we were up until like 3 a.m. laughing our asses off because he wouldn't shut up. <laughs> and then the next day we went to um, we went to the Alamo and we had oh, yeah. lunch at the Hard Rock Cafe. I have like vague glimpses. I feel like time is just disappearing from my mind and uh, just just really like memorable things. Like I don't even remember like specific rides or anything. I do remember messing with Uncle Chuck the entire time. Uh, the, the, the student teacher, yeah. uh, who, uh, I, I think we're still friends on Facebook, but, uh, we, we just called him uncle Chuck and made fun of him and, uh, said that he had a fanny pack the entire time. And we just like, <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty much, uh, <laughs> that was pretty much six legs for us. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know why it is that like, it, it's just disappeared from my mind i also don't remember middle school like at all i vividly remember my entire school experience (laughs) i also remember this is funny i meant i meant to mention this i remember our first contest ever when we were doing pathways Mm. uh it was at moore we we got first place Mm -hmm. which was which led me to have high expectations, which sadly, <laughs> as my first contest ever, we got first place. And I was like, oh, we're going to dominate. Um, although that was a really good year. Uh, and we <laughs> we had won, and we were on the field, and after massing, and all the guards uh, all the guards were talking to each other, and band members were talking to each other. And I was just kind of standing there, because I had talked to my friends, and they'd ran off to do something. And I was just kind of standing there alone, and I hear a voice go, Hey, Tyler! And I turn around, and I see you coming towards me at full speed. Oh, yeah. And you go, I forgot to give you a hug! And you run over to me, and you lift my entire body off the ground and spin me around <laughs> and set me down. And I was like, how did he just do that? <laughs> um, I, yes, I did. Uh, unless I missed someone, hopefully I did not. But uh, I did specifically try to hug everyone yeah. that, that night. Uh, because we won. So, I mean, yeah. like, yeah. Celebration. <laughs> so, yes, just... I, I specifically tried to hug everyone uh, and lift everyone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was impressed that you were able to get me off the ground. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of horrifying just to see you, like, <laughs> running towards me with your arms open. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, you had a look in your eye. <laughs> I enjoy people. I enjoy hugging people. Yeah. And, you know, it's my first thing. Nothing, Love never fails. So <laughs> Yeah, nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I think that um, while I, you know, uh, spoke some figurative shit about uh, <laughs> the directors, uh, I do think that music itself and the communal experience of it is is sort of the best experience that I got out of it. And so, like, a lot of it is, like, the, the community and being interconnected with mm-hmm. everyone and playing music it's at family. the same time. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the, the negative stuff, like, sticks out because it's, like, ugh, all this, you know, drama about... Uh, I mean, for me specifically, it was a drum major, but, like, all that doesn't mean much whenever, in the end, you've, you know, you're with this community of people, and you're making music, and you're having fun, and everyone is a family. Because it's unity. Everyone is one. Yeah. One body, one band. (laughs) Um, And because of that... um, not necessarily because of that, but, like, it's one of the many reasons as to why I chose to continue doing music. Mm-hmm. Um, that something something different is happening whenever you are 
playing music in synchronicity with other people. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that contributes to the most positive experiences I've, I've had mm -hmm. in music. Um, but yeah, unfortunately we had a, a shitty lead to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I also had a choir and the musicals and stuff that I was a part of. And mm -hmm. so that, that also contributed to what I was doing. Um, <laughs> do you have any other fun stories? Uh, or do you have any story to ask of me? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to remember. Um, <laughs> I have like memories. Like I remember, I I remember way too much about freshman year. I actually <laughs> don't remember anything about sophomore year, but I remember freshman year <laughs> because it was my first year doing marching band, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, this is so new. Um, I remember us doing, trying to do mini marching. And it was not going well. Oh, yeah, that was a disaster. There was a lot of screaming. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. And uh, then we were performing, and someone tripped behind me and fell to the ground, and everyone had to step over him. <laughs> and uh, I literally almost fell flat on my face. <laughs> But that did happen sophomore year. You weren't there for that. Oh, my God. You would have, oh, made, okay, you would have okay. made so much fun of me. I don't know. Well, I mean, my senior year was, like, also very, very bad for mini marching because yeah. we could not. No, I mean, I was talking about for your senior year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was, that was, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was there. I experienced it. Oh, <laughs> um. There was a lot. That's why I said there was a lot of screaming. <laughs> um, we tried, but, you know. <laughs> Effort was made. Um, so I guess some background on that is that, um, so the year before, we had done really well um, in mini marching because... Um, I don't know if you would remember, but, uh, uh, Lucas Rempe and, um, Sonny Suman, um, uh, Sonny has been on the podcast. Um, but, uh, the year before we had done really well with, uh, Faust mm -hmm. and, uh, we should have won that many marching, <laughs> but, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I think guard won that year, but they actually did their mini marching with flags, which is kind of unfair. But you wow, know, that is <laughs> all they. I thought they were only allowed to use poles. Yeah. Well, either way, it's yeah. like that's still yeah. an advantage that yeah. a section has. Anyways, um, and so I was put in a position of leadership with Jaron. Um, and so we didn't communicate well. And so that was, that was really just the source of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so decisions couldn't be made well. Um, and we just, we had hard. terrible music and terrible decision making. So, meh. You should have seen it the year after. It was almost worse. <laughs> we, because of... <laughs> We were doing it to, like, the Superman theme, I think, because there was some sort of Superman coming out that mm. year. It was, like, like Man of Steel or something had it come out Man that year. Steel. I don't remember. Um, and Brooks gave us the the music for it. And he was helping us, but literally no one would shut up. And so at one point he literally was like, fine, do it yourselves. And he walked away for, like, the rest of the day. <laughs> like, for the rest of the day. And we were just like, well... We don't even have the drill, so he had the drill. So no. let's figure this out. <laughs> okay. I mean, we had. I mean, we had our. Oh, but he, okay. But okay. he had like the master plan, right, right. so <laughs> and he, he was just like, "Do it yourselves. I'm done." It was. It was funny until we had to work it out ourselves. Right. And then he saw us like. <laughs> 
shifting trying around. Fig- trying to figure out where to go. <laughs> and he had mercy on us and came back. But that was really bad. Oh, there was a lot of yelling that year. <laughs> and we did not do well at all. Well, <laughs> it's a shame, though, because I, I feel like, I don't know. Maybe you, uh, I set the the bar too high the the year before. Not <laughs> I, but like we had set the bar too high the year before, and then it's just like everything fell apart after that. And I was like, eh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was in guard when we did many marching, we did really good because we did we did like a rainbow thing. <laughs> but I don't even remember what the music was. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Or I guess we're telling these stories about mini marching and. Uh, we haven't even explained what mini marching is. So mini marching is where uh, each section of the band, so like low brass, uh, uh, clarinets, depending on how big the section is, clarinets, mm-hmm. flutes, uh, trumpets, um, although I guess it was high brass yeah, because they also brass. included mellows, um, saxes, um, low reeds. Percussion. Uh, uh, I have percussion and uh, guard uh, would pick their own music and uh, do marching drill with like this was a short marching drill with a section. Um, and so every year, you know, everyone tries to be creative and make cool stuff. Um, but some decisions are better than others. Uh, <laughs> um, the cacophony of my senior year was uh, since the year before we had done Faust uh, we were like oh wouldn't it be cool if we did like Dante's Inferno or something and that didn't work because you can't do music to that <laughs> you can't do marching to that if everything is just hell uh, <laughs> um, and it was hell yeah, it, it was. Um, but Faust was really cool the, the year before. Um, and then the year before that was my sophomore year. And so I had done, because uh, I was drum major that year, uh, the drum majors did an exhibition performance. Uh, because, I mean, there were only three of us. And since we were like the drum majors... It was like, oh, we can't be scored for our thing. So we we were like the exhibition performance yeah. for Bidney Marching. Um, and so we did, because uh, the drum majors that year was myself, Daniel, my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, and Daniel's girlfriend at the time was uh, Julia Witcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we basically did it to where like... It was like a love triangle thing. And then by the end of it, I killed my brother and uh, like Julia and I I walked away in the sunset. (laughs) It was was great. Uh, That's awesome. (laughs) We had like a a choreographed sword fight and everything. It was was fun. (laughs) Always Uh, over the top with you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Which, I mean, also, I think that contributes a lot to um, the way that, um, you know, about my cosplay group not my cosplay group our cosplay group Mm -hmm. uh solstice cosplay that we do skits every year yeah um i watched your skit from from this year i think it was uh, the pokemon Pokemon yeah Yeah. um so i mean we use marching stuff uh and we use uh like it's a mixture of like color guard and marching stuff uh but i still like produce all the music and stuff yeah um so i mean Marching band is still a part of what I do even now. <laughs> <laughs> you just learn things there that are very applicable to right projects you'll be doing later in life. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it, while it doesn't necessarily pertain to music specifically, but it, it's sort of like, it's like academic term, but like organizational leadership yeah. is a very important thing I got out of it. And so it's like, I, people say that like, oh, some people are leaders or whatever. And Mm -hmm. I I think that anyone can be a leader if they're like taught how to be a leader. And if 
they like are put into that position in the right time. Yeah. Um, and so I just ended up being a good leader, but that sort of organizational leadership thing contributed to the way that, you know, the way that we plan skits or being drum major later, or even like leading a, a band. Cause now I'm scheduling rehearsals to play my own music. So mm-hmm. like that, that stuff still is contained within the, the leadership role, but I think more people need to be a part of something like that, yeah. a sport or marching band's a sport. Uh, uh, but it is. Uh, <laughs> um, because then you you have to understand what it's like to be a a part of a group, a part of a unit, and have to work together and organize in order to accomplish a goal. To be in a marching band. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, sure, SpongeBob, but uh, (laughs) um, at the same time, it's still with, like, football or basketball or whatever. It just teaches you kind of humility a little bit. Yeah. Because, you know, I came in and I was like, ooh. I mean, I actually did not come in, like, thinking I was going to be hot stuff, you know. (laughs) I came in and I was terrified and I was like, these are older people. They're going to hate me. Nah. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> Actually, John was the first person that I met uh, yeah. because I showed up to, like, um, the mini marching that we do in, like, July mm-hmm. where it's just, like, three days. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and he was the first person I met, and I thought he was going to be my section. I was like, oh, I know him. And then he ended up being drum major. Right, and I was right. like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, anyways, are we good? Do we have any other, like, mini stories to tell? I think that's yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, band stories. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, it's been fun catching up. Oh, yeah, actually, I do have the, the second podcast question that I ask. Um, instead of what advice do you have for people, uh, what have you been, uh, watching, listening to, reading, uh, or playing, I don't know if you play any video games, um, that you want other people to, to know about. Oh, okay. Oh, I have so much. <laughs> okay. Obviously, Black Mirror. I've been mm-hmm. indulged in Black Mirror. Oh, and yeah. I am obsessed with it. Yeah. And I'm almost done with it, so yeah. I'm, like, really sad that it's. I'm going to be empty. Or you're, good, you're just really sad that it exists and you've been watching it in the first place because it's incredibly sad. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have been watching a show called Dragula, which is... Um, a Rob Zombie song? No, uh, <laughs> it's actually not. Uh, it's a... I mean, it is a Rob well, Zombie yeah, song. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's a, a reality show with drag queens who are competing to be, like, the next drag super monster. So it, un- unlike, like, like RuPaul's Drag Race or something like that, where it's, like, kind of a pageant mm-hmm. for, like... A, pretty and doing cool stuff this is all like horror drag oh, and like okay they it's like it's like horror glamour and, and filth are the mm. three components hmm. so they show up and like the looks that they pull are honestly kind of horrifying mm. with the prosthetics and the mm. like for example one of the ones in the top three mm. uh came out and the look was horror. And so she was wearing this, like, huge white gown. Mm. And she had, like, frailed white hair that was, like, back over her forehead. Mm. So you could see her entire head. Mm. And her face was, like, there were uh, huge scratch marks down her face that mm. were bloodied and that had whited her eyes out. And so her eyes were white. And mm. she was, like, holding a mirror. And she was, like, kind of floating down. And then they dumped blood on her. Mm. And she just started, like, screaming. And it was... <laughs> A little bit horrifying, but it's That's really cool. Great. It's a uh, it's really interesting. Uh, For the um, love of performance, I, yeah. I might at least watch like a few episodes, but I don't know how much of it I can handle at a time. <laughs> <laughs> watch some of the well, I, I'll I'll recommend some episodes <laughs> later because uh, it's it's really good. And then of course they have regular Drag Race, which just premiered. Right. Um, oh yeah, I've been watching. I've been watching a lot of old horror movies. Mm. You know, like I said, Friday the 13th and 
stuff like that because I I just like found a way to get like a free trial so I could watch them and then cancel the free trial. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I've been listening to quite a lot actually. (laughs) Um, I've been listening to a lot of the people that were nominated for the Grammys. You know, Mm. Lord Melodrama was my Mm. favorite album of last year because Mm. I I thought it was genius. Um, uh, I've been listening to the people that I'm going to see in concerts which have Mm. been Halsey and Gaga and Lana. Mm. I'm seeing Lana in February. And so I've been listening to her a lot to try to kind of get in the mood. And then I've been listening to Halsey and uh, Florence. I've been listening to a lot of Florence and the Machine. I've been meaning to listen to Florence and the Machine. I I started listening to her and I'm obsessed with her now. (laughs) (laughs) And reading... I've been reading that that book, The Snowman. Um, I've been trying to read the, the Sun and Her Flowers, which is the sequel to Milk and Honey, hmm. which was a poetry book, um, and it was amazing. I loved that book; it made me feel all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been playing game wise. I honestly have not been playing that much. I hmm. found that I've been doing more than just sitting there and playing you know I've just been busier and so <laughs> I, I have the mentality where I'm like I really want to play this game but then I'm mm. like but you're tired <laughs> <laughs> or but you have other stuff to do and then I'm right. like uh. but I am waiting for Far Cry 5 okay <laughs> yeah Nazi killer 5000 or yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah that's all real good stuff uh, for me, uh, watching, I haven't been watching much lately other than like YouTube channels of, uh, like philosophical media stuff, like Wisecrack, uh, Nerd Writer, uh, Just Write put, a, a video up recently that is, um, what writers can learn from, uh, Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> which uh apparently it is there a lot <laughs> it well yes but like uh for one if you haven't seen fury road mm-hmm. oh my god yeah. like it's the shit uh like i always describe it as here's the top here's over the top here's mad max fury road <laughs> like yeah. it is just so much and it's excellent they made but a game the, off of that i, I think Hmm? They made a Mad Max Fury Road game. I'm yeah. Sure. Well, I think it was just like a Mad Max game. Yeah, it's like a racing game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that movie didn't have a script. Yeah. They they had storyboards, but it didn't have a script because like writing it out wouldn't make sense. Yeah. So they it was really more like a graphic novel as a script. It's really cool. Um, and then. I mean, I guess I've also been, like, watching old Jackie Chan movies. Uh, <laughs> Any particular reason behind that? Uh, I love Jackie Chan. He's the greatest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, just also because uh, kung fu movies are really fun to watch. Even if the story's garbage, just <laughs> kung fu movies are really fun to watch. Um, and then listening to, I've been listening to M83 which is kind of strange um, just because, like, I mean, E3 hasn't put out an album in, like, two years. Right. But um, I've been catching up on that. Um, still listening to everything, everything. Still listening to clipping. Uh, but I've also been listening to a lot of local artists yeah. um, because I've been feeling more and more like a hypocrite trying to promote my own music as a local <laughs> artist and not listening to other uh, artists. And so I have been listening to local artists uh, – I got, uh, or I listened to Noisebleed Sound. Um, they're excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, Michelle is excellent, has an excellent voice, and then just all of the, uh, I know almost everyone in that band. Um, I listened to uh, Packing for Pluto mm-hmm. recently. I've they're, listened to them. They're, uh, they're really yeah. cool, uh, cool sound. Uh, I'll be playing a show with Don't Tell Dina soon. Nice. Um, I listened to Don't Tell Dina back when, like... Back when I was in Don't Tell Dina. Uh, Uh, (laughs) Back when I won't came out. Right. Um, 
but uh, now now they do really cool stuff. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not into Hotel Dina, but they do really cool stuff. They have an album coming out, or I guess it will have already been out. Yay, future past tense. Um, <laughs> so that album is out February 9th. Nice. Um, and so they're putting out some music. I can't wait to hear it. Um, I need Johnny Manchild and the Poor Bastards. <laughs> I haven't been listening to them yet. Really? Uh, I will. Uh, that's another person on my list. Um, Keith Lee is really good. Um, really anyone who's on a Heller Music Group. Um, and man, I'm losing track of who who all the list. Uh, but <laughs> yay, all of these people uh, who make awesome stuff. And there's... There's so many people to listen to. Um, playing, I got to one of the last fights in Undertale, and I'm losing my patience uh, <laughs> because I'm doing a neutral playthrough. Yeah. Um, or a, a pacifist playthrough, and so it's like becoming increasingly difficult near the end because I don't have any killing power. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you play Undertale? Actually, no. Oh, I have okay. watched people play Undertale, okay, okay. and it just it looked like something that if I got into it, I would never stop. Mm. And it's if, not that long. If I didn't like it, I would hate it. Mm. I there's a part of the fandom that I'm like, yeah, stay, that, stay that away. was a reason as to why I hadn't played it <laughs> for so long. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like a similar thing. Oh yeah, by the way, watching uh, Steven Universe. Uh, everyone should watch the shit out of Steven Universe. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, a uh, similar thing. Like the Undertale fan base is like, Ugh. yeah. Same with the Steven Universe fan yeah. base is like, oh geez, like even like the Gravity Falls fan base sometimes. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, people. Just let people enjoy things and just leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I also have like a whole other list of video games that I bought on the Steam winter sale that I exactly that's exactly <laughs> where I am right now. Is I bought like fifty games that were like you know three hundred dollars all together, but I saved like two hundred dollars. Yeah, and 50, exactly. You know, and so I have like fifty games that I need to play because mm. the uh, PS4 did a. PlayStation Store did a, a sale uh, too, yeah, yeah. and so you know it was console, <laughs> so it was like, who? And now I have like twenty games to play, and yeah. I just I need to get through them because then yeah. something else comes out, and I'm like, hey, I'll buy it, and yeah. then it just sits on the <laughs> on the please play me list. Yeah, well, that's why I enjoy uh, short story based indie games mm-hmm. because they are short. They are very, like, emotional or very good quality, very good art, but don't have, like, you know, the millions of dollars to back up a, you know, semi-soulless game or whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah, in the same way of support your local musicians, support indie games as well. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, did I list all of the watching, listening, reading. playing, reading? Um I just finished uh, listening to, reading um, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by uh, Robert Heinlein. Uh, I Science fiction is my shit. Um, yeah. But um, a really cool uh, book, uh, really before its time. Really, like, the 1960s was, like, the amazing time for science fiction for <laughs> yeah. whatever reason. Um and like it has a very interesting perspective about an AI, which is really interesting coming from Robert Heinlein in the 1960s, <laughs> the 60s. because computers didn't really. No it, one knew they could yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, again, Tyler, thank you for doing this with me. No problem. I loved it. Um. Thank Where can we me. find you and your things? You can find me at Tygonza. My handle is Tygonza on most social media, T-Y-G-A-N-Z-A. And then, you know, Facebook. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and then we will look forward to whatever stories and stuff that you're going to write. And <laughs> I'm sure we will all enjoy. 
I ever publish, I'll have you. <laughs> I'll pay you for a thirty second ad. Yeah, it's a, I mean, for <laughs> shit, I'll promote it anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, heck, even if you don't, you just self publish, put it on Amazon for free, or yeah. whatever, and just be like, hey, here you go, it's a book. <laughs> I mean, that's a way to do it. Yeah. Because uh, really, just finish things. Yeah. That's 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 what I need. That's to do. the trick. That's my problem. <laughs> I need to finish things. Um, but yeah, once you start finishing things, it's like, oh, this is what finishing things feels like. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll try that some more. Um, but yeah, again, thank you. Of course. I'm Santiago Ramones. I'm Tyler Johnston. You can find all the things that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. I make music as well as this podcast. You can leave reviews on Apple Podcasts. You can leave comments on YouTube or I don't know what sort of interaction you can do on Stitcher because I don't use Stitcher, but you can do that as well. Um, or you can leave comments directly on my website as well. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, if you like it or don't like it, um, you can buy my music or not buy my music. You can download it for free or just continue streaming it off of Bandcamp, whatever you want to do. Um, and I am going to be playing more music live uh, this year, and I will try to update that on the social medias as often as I can. I always have my podcast with my three things. Those three things shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong. <laughs>